Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to talk to you about five things that I didn't know before having my c-section. I'm going to try and keep this video to like keep away too much TMI but the next one is going to have the more like TMI type stuff so it's up to you if you want to watch both or one or neither really. Um, so the first one is you still have after pain. So when you have a baby you have like with your first baby you don't tend to feel it as much but as you have more the after pains get worse and worse and basically what the after pain is is continuing contractions as your womb is shrinking back down to normal size that's all it is but it can feel like really intense labor for some people and it can feel worse than actual labor for some people the more babies you have now i didn't realize that when you have a c-section you still get after pain it didn't really occur to me because you don't have labor i didn't really consider the after pain so it was weird to me having the process of having a c-section um without having any labor or anything beforehand and then after the c-section for about three days it felt like i was in labor and i couldn't like my head couldn't process why that was happening um, obviously now I know it is just after pain I didn't have it with my first who was a vaginal delivery but yeah I didn't realize that was a thing <laughs> I never thought about it it makes sense now but yeah so you're still gonna get after pain depending on which child this is it'll be better or worse hopefully it won't be too bad for you just don't resist the pain relief <laughs> because you'll probably need it I was on quite a bit of pain relief actually uh, the second one is they want you to move as soon as physically possible. Now, originally I was told that it would be sort of 12 to 24 hours if you have an epidural before they try to move you because you need to get your full range of motion back. You need to get all your feeling back and everything. That wasn't the case for me. Um, the epidural didn't work effectively anyway, but my legs were kind of like pins and needles rather than numb. And I was still able to move them, even though I couldn't wait there. So it was a bit confusing with mine. I can explain that another time, but basically, due to my Alice Dan loss, it didn't work effectively for me. And some people it doesn't. But with me, I had my C-section started probably around half ten, eleven o'clock. I didn't come out of the C-section till half two in the afternoon. I don't know what happened. I know it's a lot longer than it should have been, but whatever happened happened while I was under general anaesthetic so I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, Taken up to my room and everything I was barely conscious because my oxygen levels would not regulate and it got to around about 10 o'clock at night so what's that 12 hours under 12 hours later but around about 12 hours later and they were pushing me and pushing me and pushing me to stand up and get out of bed. Now I was too weak at this time to even sit up let alone get out of bed but they desperately want you to get out of bed so badly because they need to get your catheter out which they can't do until you're out of bed and you're prone to infection the longer you have it in so i kind of like bucked it up they only had one person with me which was weird because of my bmi i'm supposed to have two people with me anyway but hey ho um she pushed me to get out of bed i managed to stand up and i went so incredibly woozy my legs were like jelly but i couldn't stand up further or sit down because I felt like I was going to pass out and I ended up being able to sit on the chair that was literally right next to the bed um I got to the chair and I was still woozy and she kept saying like just give it another minute it'll ease off once you sat down it didn't ease off and she had me sat there for about 20 minutes before checking my oxygen levels which had dropped into the 80s and I kept telling her like my oxygen's too low I know the signs because I've had it for god knows how many hours i know when my oxygen is dropping because you keep putting on and off my oxygen and this is how it feels and she was like no i'm sure it's okay it should have eased off by now <laughs> that didn't happen so obviously i was put back into bed so that i could go back on the oxygen which didn't reach me but yeah so long story short which is already made long <laughs> um they do want you to get out of bed literally as soon as you're physically able to get up um, luckily I did manage to get up in the morning and I was able to walk around get the catheter out my oxygen still wasn't regular but it was regular enough for me to physically be able to stand up without passing out so you know bonus um, the third thing is that you can have abdominal numbness which sounds strange 
I, again, didn't realise this was a thing, but this can be long term and it can actually be for the rest of your life. I don't know how mine's going to turn out because I'm only 10 weeks postpartum, 10 and a half weeks. Um, but basically from my belly button to my scar, the skin is completely numb. Like you poke and prod it and I literally can't feel it. I can feel my womb, so I can feel like period pains and things, but I can't feel anything that's touching my skin. And it's really strange. Like I'm pressing it at the moment and I can't feel it. It's really, really, it's the weirdest sensation. For the first couple of weeks, it's like pins and needles. Um, and it's actually quite painful when things touch you because of that pins and needly feeling. You know, like when you get pins and needles in your finger and you squeeze it and it's like a really sharp, irritating, achy, weird pain. That's what I got on my abdomen. Um, now it's just numb. It doesn't really hurt anymore when you touch it. It does if you hit it hard, but I mean, that's the miracle of having a toddler. <laughs> so that's how I know that. Um, but yeah, you can get abdominal numbness, which can last for the rest of your life. Who knew? Um, the fourth thing is that an epidural actually does not hurt. The painful part about it is having the anaesthetic because when you have local anaesthetic, it does hurt for a few seconds before it numbs. It sounds really strange and counterintuitive to me, like how painful an anaesthetic is given it's designed to numb you. But that is just how it works. That's completely normal. The epidural itself, you do sort of feel it, but it's not painful it's just kind of like it's more the nerves around it because you can't move even a centimeter because if you move at all I'm higher risk of this so I don't know what it is normally but I'm very high risk of it because of my EDS and things but you're more likely to rupture your the sac in the spine I can't remember what it's called now but basically you have like a rupture which causes that weird spinal headache thingy um or you are actually at higher risk of paralysis because if they mess it up they can mess up your cord your spinal cord and that is obviously going to paralyze you so staying still is the difficult bit and it's terrifying but it doesn't hurt it's just the anxiety of trying to stay as still as physically possible and the fifth one is that they monitor the baby for quite a long time before you have your c-section now for me my baby when she was inside me and even now well not now but for a couple of weeks after she tended to sleep from like two o'clock in the morning until two o'clock at um in the afternoon so her heart rate was always really slow and she barely moved during the mornings now of course because they were monitoring the baby in the morning for the c-section they picked this up and her heart rate was really really low and her movement was non-existent no matter what I like I tried to have ice because you're not allowed to drink or eat anything so I kind of chewed on some ice um, and they gave me an IV bag of fluids to see if that would help and nothing did it put me at the top of the list to have the c-section even though I did tell them a few times like this is what my baby does she's always done it since like she was conceived she's always been quiet in the morning and really active on an afternoon she kind of like when she's awake she's awake and when she's not she's really calm um, but that got me jumped in to have the c-section I ended up being monitored whilst they were trying to do cannulas and everything which was a whole other ballpark it's really complicated and I'll talk about that in my c-section video or one of them if I do more than one I haven't decided yet but because of that I ended up being on the monitor for about three hours maybe it's supposed to be a 20 minute monitor just to make sure the baby's healthy and good to go and that you don't need an emergency c-section but for me, it was ended up being about three hours. Um, the C-section itself was supposed to only take like half an hour. And for me, it took like two and a half hours. It just depends on who you are. But yeah, those are my five things that I honestly did not have a clue about before having my C-section. I did, I, bleh, I did so much research and I looked at so many YouTube videos. And these are things that kind of I didn't really see mentioned on any of that. And I just found it really strange to me. Um, a lot of it is kind of common sense like you're having trauma to your abdomen of course you're going to have some form of either pain or numbness and um, the after pains is common sense getting up and moving is sort of common sense I just thought I'd have a little bit longer and the epidural not hurting because the anaesthetic yeah because people say like how horrible it is having an epidural it wasn't actually that bad given how high risk I was it wasn't that bad. I was told never to have an epidural, but they wanted to get the spinal block in me as well as having the option to have an epidural because I don't respond to anaesthetic. Really, really complicated. 
hidden and confusing and weird but yeah so those are my five things i hope you like this video like comment and subscribe down below and tune in for my next video which is five more things i didn't know about c-section that one is kind of going to be a bit more like tmi and gooey goodness so just to pay for that it isn't bad but it is kind of a little bit more tmi so yeah like comment subscribe down below and i will see you in the next one bye guys